Welcome back, Arkansas viewers. I am here with the one and only Mr. Osiris Bali. Welcome, welcome. So All glad right. to have you, man. For the people out there who don't know you, tell them a little bit about yourself. Oh, man, I'm, a, I'm an artist in the community here in Arkansas. Uh, Hip-hop, R&B, poetry, spoken word. Uh, just been doing that around here for years, man. Activists in the community fighting for different causes. For uh, the people in Little Rock, man, you know, just the plight of everyday people. That's what's paramount to me. And, um, you know, I'm a racial equity coordinator for the Arkansas Public Policy Panel. And I'm one of the leading organizers for Arkansas Youth Coalition for Social Change. Perfect. Yeah. That, that's a whole, a whole lot in just a nutshell because what you do spills over to so many avenues uh, in the community. But just breaking a little bit about that, we'll talk about the artist section first. Yeah. What, what, tell people about your artistry. What inspires you there? Well, it was basically, for me, it was something that I, I found to kind of divert me from going down the wrong path in yeah. life. And so uh, when I first started off, you know, uh, I considered myself a hip hop artist, but what really brought me into the scene around here was the spoken word, that art yeah. form. And so, you know, just ho hosting uh, open mics over at Mediums, and then uh, parlaying that into uh, joining the Foreign Tongue Spoken Word Troupe. And we toured through the country nationally, competing in poetry slams, and just going out there spreading that the whole movement, because uh, what I consider myself is, uh, <clears throat> I consider myself, the platform that I put it all under is uh, liberation arts. Okay. I use the art form to free me from the struggles in my life. Yeah. So finding my freedom and using my voice to create some, some social change out here is why I really uh, just was involved in the arts, so I, I use it under the platform liberation arts. But from the poetry and the spoken word, it. Uh, it uh you know saying transitioning into me being a, a um, hip hop artist here in the community, yeah. performing with the live bands, uh, getting into R and B a little bit, and uh, you know saying touring around the nation and just you know just spreading my my message of uh, my love for the arts and just telling yeah. my story because that's the importance of what I do is showing people the importance of knowing your story and being able to share it with Absolutely. people. Absolutely. And from there, you've done so many things. You yeah. mentioned a racial equity coordinator, mm -hmm. um, motivational speaker, and Something also, like uh, <laughs> did I see you had a course that you were you're instructing? Yeah, uh, so last, uh, last year, what I was able to do was take a, uh, teach a, what they call a special interest course at Euler with the students who uh, were interested in, in doing spoken word poetry. And yeah. Spoken word, I, the reason why I keep on saying that because spoken word is more of a uh, performance art form of the poetry and poetry yeah. could just be just writing. And so what we, what we did was over at Eula with the Donaldson Academy, we basically were able to um, teach them about the importance of writing and, and, uh, and language and just, just being students of, of uh, knowing their literature. Yeah. And so with that, putting that, that uh, the thespian aspect of it in there too. Absolutely. And so like learning how to perform your art form, practicing, rehearsing, uh, choreographing, all of that. And so it was it was great, man. Oh, uh, yeah. Shout out to the Donaldson Academy and uh, Miss, Miss Amber yeah. for uh, putting me on with that. They do great work over there. Yeah, they're doing some real good work with, with, with the students. And then, like I said, it was a special interest class because this wasn't a, a class that was full grade. It was basically to give them something to do yeah. in their leisure time. Absolutely. And so the, the students were very very dedicated and I'm, I'm, I'm building relationships with a lot of the, the youth and letting them know that like, you know saying, you can use your art form to, uh, to your benefit and allow it to take you places, gotcha. you know? Gotcha. So, yeah. Yeah. Racial Equity Coordinator, Arkansas yeah. Public Policy Panel. Yeah. And let's start here. For people who don't know, maybe we have someone outside of Arkansas. Mm -hmm. Talk about what Arkansas Public Policy Panel is. Basically, the Arkansas Public Policy Panel was something an organization that started in 1963, actually. And it spawned from the Little Rock Central High Crisis. Okay. Mothers wanted to uh, build a movement to basically ensure that all the students got a quality education, yeah. all of the students, after integration. Because you know, after uh, the crisis, whatever, that was a year that everything was shut down. Right. So right after that situation shut down, and um, they started a movement, it was called, uh, 
uh, the women of the, the women of the panel, okay. and that's basically was a, a, a diverse group of women who basically want to push for solid education. After that, the concern became more than just education; it yeah. became issues about around uh, environmental justice, yeah. civil rights, election reform, and um, still education as well. Absolutely. And so, under those buckets. Years later, what uh, we still are doing to the organization is building advocacy yeah. and teaching people about coalition building to fight for education, for environmental justice, for civil rights reform, racial equity, yeah. and uh, just a number of topics. Awesome. And so, like, you know what I'm saying, working with Arkansas Public Policy Panel, I, I ensure that we are fighting for racial equity issues in Arkansas. Yeah and also being a, with our Citizens First Congress as the sister organization of Arkansas Public Policy kind of, we ensure that we don't do our work separately. Yeah. We collaborate and, and uh, build partnerships in and outside of the state okay. to make sure that we can achieve the goals that we want to get accomplished. Yeah. So, awesome. yeah. So racial equity coordinator, what, mm -hmm. tell me what your day-to-day -day looks like. <sighs> my day-to-day -day is, my day-to-day -day is very sporadic. Um, one one thing that I, we've really been working on this past year is involving the youth. Okay. And so when we're talking about racial equity, diversity, and inclusion, mm -hmm. I believe that the conversation needs to start with our youth. Absolutely. Because the youth have a different and a more unique perspective, but it's easier to get them to understand a lot of things and then bring the conversation to the elders. Mm -hmm we create an intergenerational conversation that benefits us all as a, as a whole community. So we've been doing a lot of work with the Arkansas Youth Coalition for Social Change to bring the youth into the conversation, to allow them to use their voices and motivate them and give them whatever advice and suggestions. So for the past year and a half or so, we've been really working with the youth. Um, racial equity workshops around Arkansas, we, we've done uh, quite a few racial equity workshops to basically start the conversation with people about making people comfortable about talking about race. Yeah. Because if you can't have the discussion, then we can't fix the issue. Yeah. And so we've been doing racial equity workshops around Central Arkansas, Southern Arkansas, and in Northwest Arkansas. Awesome. And so that's been a major thing. We just left Fayetteville. Yeah. We're going through another training, training series with a racial equity workshop with our group, Race Forward, yeah. national organization, but we're one of the few partners that they work with in the South. Awesome. So uh, shout out to Glenn Harris, the director of Race Forward. Uh, just just talk to them today, and they're looking to do a lot of uh, a lot more racial equity work inside of Arkansas to help us progress in the in the direction we need to go as a community and as a state. Awesome. Awesome. Outside of that, uh, we've been working on criminal justice reform issues. We were advocating in a legislative session for a lot of different criminal justice uh, reform bills or bills that we felt like would help people that are. Uh, incarcerated or formerly incarcerated yeah. and the bills that didn't help them we were trying to basically lobby and advocate against those get, gotcha. bills getting passed so we did a lot of work this year in the legislative session uh been working with seeds of liberation which is a social justice and criminal justice reform uh, non uh, yep. working with don jeffrey and uh just promoting the work that they do yeah. because it's not all about what I can do is all it's also about boosting the help of people Absolutely. that are in the same uh, arena with me. Let me ask you this. What yeah. what inspires you? What if, and that's from the aspect of your artistry, when you go to work, mm -hmm. when you're working with the youth, what actually inspires you? Man, what inspires me uh is to actually see that like the ideas and the and the change that's taken uh, it's taking place, actually inspiring the people to get up and want to do something. Yeah. Um, seeing that, and also like every day waking up with the motivation to know that like there is work to be done. Yeah. And so, just the people that constantly in contact with me to get a message say, "Hey, did you hear about this? Yeah. Um, wh what are you going to do about this right here?" People looking at me like, "Man, uh, they believe I actually." To make some things happen yeah. for them. And so seeing that, and then just the current climate that we see in our nation right now, a lot of, a lot of, it, it sounds crazy, but it's like a catch-22, the bigotry, the racism, yeah. all of those things, that inspires me. Because you know what? That we gotta have somebody that's gonna speak about it. Yeah. And 
there are plenty of people around here doing the great work, but when I wake up and I see that hatred, it inspires me to push more for love and actually get out here and work in my community and help build it in our community and, and, uh, and also include myself in the process of actually active parenting in our community with our youth and uh, just involving everybody in partnership and then, you know, partnerships and collaboration. That, 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 that inspires me, man. And the art form, that's going to wake up. I'm going to wake up every day inspired by the arts because I can't wake up without a song in my head. I'm yeah. going to think about a Nas lyric. I'm, I'm going to think about uh, some Jay-Z, some Tupac. I'm inspired by all of the all of the different music, man. I've been listening to J.I.D. and the Earth Gang, and, and uh, you know, I love SZA, you know what I'm saying? I love um, Ari, yeah. Lennox, man, you know what I'm saying? I'm inspired by all these different artists, and I wake up and I think about, I start my day with music and poetry, man. So that's what inspires me, man. For, for those out there that want to get in contact with you, what's your social media handles or the best way to talk to you? The best way to talk to me is to run up and talk to me in person. But, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? If you're going to see me in the social media world, I keep it simple for you, man. Osiris Bali. You know what I'm saying? O-S-Y-R-U-S-B-O-L-L-Y. That's social media on Instagram, Snapchat, Twitter, Facebook. I keep it simple. Ain't no, ain't no other alias. They, 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 some, some people call me a big bro because I'm, I'm, I'm siblings out here with everybody. But to get in contact with me, man, it's just my name, man. Perfect. Real name, no gimmick. Perfect, perfect. You write a check to me, you're going to you're gonna put it in my name. <laughs> Osiris, Osiris Bali, Bali man. Yo, That's what up? it is, man. Well, listen, we appreciate you and all the work that you're doing, not only with Public Policy Panel, but also with the youth. Mm -hmm. Anytime you want to come back, you always got an open seat here at Arkansas. Thank you for tuning in to this week's Arkansas with Mr. Osiris Bali. We'll make sure to have his social media handles and information in the links below, and we'll see you guys next week. Big bro love you.